Our objective is obviously education as much as anything. Commemoration is part of, is part of the idea of the museum, but commemoration is not enough. Most people in, uh, of the younger generation have never even met someone who from that time. So it's our job to, get this, to give this knowledge for the Polish population here in Poland and for international visitors. The Umschlagplatz was the waiting area and the deportation area where the trains were sent from. To me, the Umschlagplatz and the being forced into the cattle wagons is the story of the Warsaw Ghetto. From almost half a million Jews, 300,000 of them went through the Umschlagplatz, forced into a cattle freight car, a rail wagon. And this is the story that has to be told. People don't think about it, they take it as a, as a okay, a fact. <laughs> they got deported, 270,000, 300,000 Jews, the Treblinka died, that's it. This is the last glimpse of the Warsaw they had. If someone would turn around and look over their shoulder, you could see the buildings on Stavki, or the last few buildings over the fence of the Umschlagplatz. That was the last view, the last piece of blue sky, because it was the summer. The last view of the buildings you saw from the cattle wagon. To me, this is a major story, not a side story, which is why we would like to have, in some form, a physical representation of the Umschlagplatz that gives credit to the size of the story that went on there. That there was a great feeling, which is related in diaries from the time of, of 1942, by the people that were caught in the trap of these street blockades and these roundup of, of, of Jews physically dragged out of their houses, that there was a feeling of nowhere to escape. What we're trying to do is physically recreate in a stylized, an abstract way, but a feeling that there's nowhere to go. So the initial idea that we have now is, a, is like a tunnel, like a pathway, bringing you down in a, in, a, in a funnel shape, let's say, to the Umschlagplatz. There's nowhere to go besides that. So the physical design of the building itself will be telling the story, will be giving you the atmosphere of the story that we're trying to tell. We're not making a Treblinka museum, but we cannot tell the story of the Warsaw Ghetto without telling the story of Treblinka. We have to have the end to the story, the where the people went. Part of the, the original post-war explanation, studies, of the Holocaust, part of the reaction of people that didn't go through the Holocaust to what happened was how could it happen that the people let themselves be captured like that? In Israel, was for many years termed the sheep to the slaughter. Thankfully, over the last few decades, this has been disregarded, disproven, and people have come to a wider understanding of it. But this is a subject that occurs to everyone. If I would have been there, what would I have done? We have to understand that there was nothing that could be done. When in fact, there was some solid information about what was going on, and that deportation didn't mean resettlement, but meant death, it in fact started to push the various groups, of resistance into action, to organize some sort of serious resistance, whether it be through the Zionist groups, through the Bundes groups, whatever the case may be, and to get some coordinated plan. And the truth is, within a few months of that, it was the, was the uprising. It was a battle that couldn't be won, and they knew that themselves. What their motivations were is another issue. That's a debate. This is the reason why it's very incorrect to say that they were sheep to the slaughter. My name is David Berman. I'm working with the Warsaw Ghetto Museum in the capacity of a curator for several of the galleries, primarily the gallery of the 1942 deportations and the gallery of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising.